Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this episode we'll be working on the retopology so we can bake the high poly information from our sculpt onto a low poly object. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. So we want to take the information from this high poly sculpt and put it onto a low poly model ready for games. And when I say low poly model, it's going to be sort of medium low. You could go very low for this. It depends on how close you're going to be to this asset. So if it's for the main character, you might go a bit higher. And let's say you wanted to use it in cutscenes or something like that. You might want to be able to add a subdivision surface modifier to this so you can have even more fidelity. Now I don't need to remake a low poly version, I can just adapt the base mesh that I already have. So somewhere along the line I forgot to save my base mesh, but because I saved my Blender files incrementally, I can find a previous version where I had that base mesh and I can bring it in. I can just click and drag that into my Blender file and tick Append. I can bring in collections, but I'll just select the separate objects, so into objects. I'll select all with A, and I don't need the camera, the empty or the light and then press append and now they're all in I'll quickly move those to a new collection so M new collection low poly and now you can see they're all there in this new collection down here the other way to append is to go to file and then append and find your files that way okay so we're going to work on the handle first so you'll notice there's a whole handle in here and then there's the strap on top and I'll do all the objects separately so the head the straps up here this bit of the handle and the other strap keeping them all separate for now. The reason is I can use a shrink wrap modifier nice and easily. And I'll show you that in a moment. The first thing I need to do is a tiny bit of tidying up. So let's start with this strap on the handle here and zoom into that. And we'll make sure I've got the low poly version there. Into edit mode and into face mode. And I'm going to delete that top face there and the bottom face down there. Now it's still got the mirror on. So if I go to my modifiers, it's got a mirror there. And I'll keep that on for the moment because it's fairly symmetrical, this axe. So the first thing I want to do is add a shrink wrap so that it attaches itself to the high poly. I'll show you what I mean. So I'll minimize the mirror for now, add modifier, and shrink wrap is under the deform menu. So first of all, let's choose the target, use our picker, and find our high poly strap just there. And you can see it changes straight away. Now it's a little bit strange as it's got the outline here and then it's showing us the mesh kind of attached to the object. So the first thing to do is to tick this on cage option. That will actually put the edges and vertices on our actual model where it should be because of the shrink wrap. So if you turn that off, that's where it was originally and this is where it is with the shrink wrap. Then we want to be above surface. So we want this just sticking out above the surface so we can tick on snapping mode above surface and increase the offset. And there you can see it sort of jumps above the surface like that. So mine is 0 0.01. It depends on the size of your axe. So you might just want to move that up and down depending on the size of your whole model. Okay, so there's a bit of editing to be done. As you can see, lots of the mesh is coming through my model and we want to get it reasonably close so we don't have the high poly mesh sticking through. So you will need to also turn snapping on, but I want to show you what it's like without it first and then put it on in a second. So let's start around the bottom here. I can add a loop cut in with Control R and bring that down to around there and that works nicely. I'll join this up to the other handle once I've finished all the objects. So that will be the last step. Now I can't see very easily this strap coming across here. So what I'll do is I'll turn X-ray mode on and then we can kind of see that line across there. So if I go to front view, select this loop cut with Alt left click and then rotate it, I can get it roughly in line and then G to grab and I can push it above. So I've moved that without snapping on. And you can see snapping up here and you need to have snapping on in order for your points to move correctly. What I mean is if I turn the shrink wrap modifier off now, you can see that it hasn't actually snapped to the top of the surface here. So if I turn off x-ray for a moment, but when I turn the shrink wrap modifier back on, it is on top. And that can get a bit confusing if you don't use snapping as well as the shrink wrap modifier. Lots of people ask me the question, why do we use snapping as well as the shrink wrap modifier? Well, their actual position is here without the shrink wrap modifier on, which is below the surface. And sometimes that can cause lots of problems. So if I grab this point here and move it right out here with the shrink wrap modifier on, it looks like it's working okay. 
and I'm going to press G to grab and try and move it into position. And it's acting a little bit strangely. That's because in reality, it's all the way out here. So when I'm pressing G to grab, it's moving it like this and then using the shrink wrap modifier. But if I turn snapping on and have it with faces enabled and then press G to grab, it snaps to the faces of the high poly model. Then combined with the shrink wrap, which puts it just on top, it works perfectly. So you must have snapping enabled as well as the shrink wrap modifier. Under the snapping tools, like I say, we use snapping to faces, but also it's helpful to have a line rotation to target. That should help you when you're going around a corner and things. So make sure you've got that selected as well. And I'll talk about project individual elements in a second. So now when I press G to grab, it actually sticks to the surface below. That combined with the shrink wrap means it's always slightly above because we've got that above surface and we've got that offset there. And that's exactly what we want. Ideally, when you're matching your low poly mesh to your high poly mesh, you don't want any big sort of blobby bits like this sticking through. Tiny bits like this should be okay, but where possible, get those to a minimum. Okay, so let's bring back X-ray mode so we can see that line and then start lining up with the line. What I like to do, which can be a bit tricky for you guys to see, but I'm trying to go above this strap, so this bit that sticks out the furthest, and then it will need a new loop cut in here. Now, if I press Control R now, notice it's really difficult for me to line up my objects. And that's because we haven't got a setting in the snapping. So I'll undo that, go back to my snapping, and that's project individual elements. If I have that ticked and I press Control R, I can now slide this loop cut up and those individual bits of the loop cut, the individual vertices, we now slide into position. So let's get that reasonably close and just check that's okay. Now, can you see here, there's a slight curve going up and there's a reasonably big gap within here. So I think it's best to control R and add another loop cut in here. That gives it the chance to follow the mesh much more closely. And if I come in here and press G to grab, it will stick even tighter to that area. So let's just smarten some of these up. So now we've followed that mesh much more closely. Let's just turn off the X-ray mode for a moment and we can see we've got a bit of blobbiness coming through. So we might want to press control R and just have another loop cut there. Now this is the tricky bit, deciding on how far to go with your low poly work. Obviously each loop cut is adding a lot of faces, but we will get better fidelity, so better detail when we look closely at our model in areas such as these. However, if you want to go low poly, you can just have two loop cuts in here and it will still work out well. It's just when you zoom in, you might notice some inaccuracies. So I'm going to go a bit more high poly than is necessary just for that really nice fidelity and detail at the end. If you're going very low poly, you can have much lower loop cuts. So one, two and three at the bottom there. And the normal map will show you that detail. It's just when you get close into here that you would start noticing inaccuracies in the strap lines around this sort of area. So for the sake of this tutorial, as I was saying, this is a highly detailed game object. We're going to go fairly close to the high poly mesh, but you can go much lower than this. Okay, let's bring back the X-ray and start moving these into position. So when I move them, because I've got snapping turned on as well as the shrink wrap, they're all moving into position nicely. Okay, let's turn that X-ray off again and see how we're getting on. So tiny blobs sticking through like that are absolutely fine. You do have to just check the other side with your mirror and make sure that's working out. And it may be that if you've got asymmetry, then you'll need to later on apply the mirror modifier and just tidy those areas up. Okay, so I'll continue on. So this one I want to line up a bit more with my mesh, so I'll rotate it until it's in line and just go around checking, making sure that things haven't moved all over the place, which they sometimes do if you've got snapping turned on and you select lots of objects. As often it's taking the camera view as to where to snap to. So let's move these into position. Now, something strange has happened, so I'll undo that, and it's because I'm working on the wrong side of my shape. So if I go to this side and press G to grab, it's working out okay. So this is the side that's actually real geometry. The other side is just mirrored geometry. So if I press G to grab, it's confused as to where it's snapping. So always work on the side that has the actual geometry rather than the mirror modifier. Okay, so we've got that, press Control R and let's bring our loop cut up and then one more loop cut there as well to smarten it all up and then move them into position.
moving this into position you can see there that it went a little bit strange to start off with that's because I'm selecting lots of vertices at once and sometimes they don't snap where you want them to now that one's a much smaller gap so I can probably get away with just two loop cuts there and still keep that nice detail after adding a loop cut it's still important to go in and select each of these and move them into position to get it as close as possible to the high poly okay so we'll have another one around here just go to front view and line that up a bit more and probably one more for this one on there and you can see those blobs slowly disappear as I move them into position okay let's get back to solid mode and I need a loop cut in here and as soon as I do that we lose a lot of that blobbiness so just a bit up the top here back to x-ray mode front view let's just move this into position first so loop cut in here and that's all I need for now because I'll link these up later on you do just have to be a little bit aware of these sort of areas because there's quite a notch in there but that should be picked up more by the normal map you don't really see it in terms of the silhouette and that's the outline of our shape so from here it's got a curved silhouette going around there I'll go back to x-ray mode for this so you can see that curve going around there and at no point do I really see it from the silhouette or the outline and that's where you'll notice inaccuracies in the normal map if I come around to here you can see the silhouette of this coming around here so I have to be more careful with this shape that it follows that pattern so always make sure you go around just double checking that everything's snapping correctly and that's both snapping to your object as well as the shrink wrap and we're trying to make sure none of the blobby bits are sticking through as little as possible anyway so for the handle I'll go a bit quicker because it's very much the same so I'll select the handle into front view into edit mode I'm going to delete these faces in here so let's go to isolation mode with forward slash and select those faces that I'm going to delete back out of isolation mode and delete faces so I'll set my shrink wrap up so I'll minimize the mirror for the moment add modifier shrink wrap in the middle of the deform choose the surface so choosing the high poly mesh so just there and it looks a bit strange at the moment turn on on cage so our edges and faces and verts marry up to the actual shrink wrap above surface and push it out a bit with the offset and straight away that's not too bad bit needed around the bottom and the top and obviously this area in here now probably the easiest way is to do another loop cut in here and then start marrying these areas up so G to grab and just pull them into position now if I go across to here it's trying to snap to an area that's in this gap so when you're moving make sure it's on a surface that's sticking out the most now because this is slightly asymmetrical we're getting blobs on one side but not on this side so I just have to be a bit aware of that when I apply my mirror modifier I'll need to adjust it slightly now we might want a tiny bit more topology in here so we can select these faces and just inset them with I and B for boundary will take out the middle there so B you can see that boundary there and roughly around there looks good and that's lined up okay same for in here I want to follow my straps however I'm just going to go back into object mode choose this strap here and delete it because we're going to create a completely new strap and back to my handle into edit mode and we want to move this loop cut to the strap so I'll go up to x-ray mode for this choose this edge here with alt left click gg to edge slide and slide it into position you can see it's gone a little bit strange and that's again because of the shrink wrap and the snapping but that's okay for now and this one I'll gg move that up and this one gg and move that up a little bit so now I'm going to get this edge loop and line it up with the straps and this one down here as well so into vertex mode so into vertex mode G to grab and start pushing this into position where the strap is it's probably a little bit difficult to see on the screen now it just looks a bit strange doesn't it with x-ray mode on okay you can see there's a bit of an anomaly here where I've got a huge face here and a smaller face there so I want to bring this around that's where the snapping is going a little bit strange in the shrink wrap so I just need to adjust it very slightly watch out for lumps coming through can you see them coming through there I just need to make sure that I'm not in this groove coming down here which again might be a bit tricky for you guys to see but just watch out for those lumps coming through is what I'm saying and try and follow the shape best you can doesn't have to be really precise I'll just come around the corner here as well a little bit 
Okay, so that's marrying up okay. And then we'll work this one out up here. So you can see some of that mesh coming through. If I go back to solid mode, you can see it coming through there. So you just gotta make sure that that's in the best place possible. So a piece that's sticking out the most. Okay, then we'll go back to solid mode there. And now we can go into isolation mode, select these face loops and delete them. Back out of isolation mode, that's forward slash on my numpad. And I can just tidy up the top here. So control R to do a loop cut there. Make sure that's in the right place. It's a bit weird around here. And again, I'm gonna to have to sort that out after the mirror, but you can see it's kind of snapping to itself there. But I can't really change that because that's after the mirror. So I'll have to go back in after I've applied the mirror to sort that one out. Now the top face is all over the place, so select that top face, I to inset to bring it in, and then we've got some better topology there. And I might do one more I to inset and bring it into there. Now we can go into vertex mode, K for knife tool, and just bring these in. Left clicking on each of these verts, E to do a new cut. So each time I go to the next one, I press E to line those up and now we've got a quad base mesh. Obviously you don't do it with that last one there, that's your quad. You might just want to smooth these out just a touch. Okay, let's just line these up as best we can. Now you can see it's losing a bit of its shape, so I'll bring this one up. We're doing okay there, and then we can bring that next one to a better position. And like I say, I'll have to sort those ones out after we've applied the mirror. Now these loops in here, if I select a few of these and just GG to slide them down a bit, and just adapt the shape slightly. More even faces like that is preferable. So then you've got more chance of hitting the high poly mesh below it. Okay, so that's the basic retopology of the handle. In the next episodes, we'll talk about slightly more complex retopology of things like the upper strap. So hopefully you're still finding this useful. Let me know in the comments below. Well done to all those people who've got this far in the course so far. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.